11 looks really complicated, but it's not. It's really easy. What's the base that we're dealing with on 11? 5900. No, 9, or e to the x. E, uh, e, uh, e is uh, the, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. E is the base. Okay. So yeah. when we're doing all of this multiplying and dividing and exponentiation, which one should we do first? Oh. The exponentiation. Okay. What does that turn into? Um, here, sorry, this is what it goes in the way. Um, what is e to the 2x squared equal to? Oh, that's, uh, e to the 4x squared. Okay. Well, no, it's e to the 4x. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, you just <laughs> multi you multiply <laughs> exponents. I meant to say 4x. I didn't mean to say 4x squared. Okay. Um, now, you'll notice that there are some things we can do. That e to the 4x divides by that e to the 4x, leaving 1. Okay, now we have 5 times e to the minus 2x all over 10 times e to the minus x. Well, let's do the numbers part first. That's 1 half. e is our base. Subtract those exponents. What do you get? Um, you get, um, it's minus 2 minus 1. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me. It's minus 2 minus a minus 1. In other words, here's what we're doing. It's really easy to drop negative signs whenever you're doing subtraction. That's what we're doing. Minus 2x minus a minus x. Yeah, so it's plus. No, it's, that turns into a plus. But minus 2x plus 1x is minus x. Okay. Now, there's one last step. Because she undoubtedly has told you, do not give answers with negative exponents. So, so just put it, like, in the bottom, I just put, like, the bottom. Well, it's important to understand that that 2 goes in the bottom also. Yeah. There's your answer. Okay. So, okay. The, these are really very simple problems. They're just adding and subtracting and multiplying. First thing, we multiply those two together. Next thing, we cancel wherever we can, and then we deal with what we got left. But remember, E is just a number. But remember those rules of exponents. They're vital. You, you, you're not going to be able to get anywhere on these problems if you don't remember how to handle exponents. In other words, like number 9, we subtract those exponents. E is the base. We don't subtract the two things. We don't subtract e to the 28th minus e to the 19th. We just subtract the exponents, and it becomes e to the 9th with the number in front of it. The way I do these all, all these problems is I, I do the number first. The, the number 5 over 10 is not getting affected by anything else. In other words, it's not doesn't have any exponents applying to those numbers or anything. So I know I'm going to end up with a one half when I'm done. Right. Number twelve. Oh, you you got that right. Let's go on. Number thirteen. Compounded continuously. What is the formula for continuous compounding? You got it right there, PERT. 
where P is your original principal. Every other formula I use A sub 1. This one I use P because it makes it easier to remember. Everybody can remember per. Okay. So, the amount. Fill in everything for me. So, um, this is R only. It's not 1 plus R. And that's where you made your, your mistake on this. It's R only. That's the number you got to come up with. You with me? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Well, you used 1 plus R. Yeah, I know. Oh. I... That's a common mistake. Everybody can make it because in the other two formulas, it is 1 plus R. But in this one, it's just R. Right. Okay. Sorry, what? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Certainly going to be a number less than fifty nine hundred. the way you can do it on your calculator. I, I was probably being a little overly cautious the other day. 5900 times E raised to the 0.21. And as long as you don't put in parentheses around the 5900, it will only raise the E to the 0.21. So what does that give you? Um, you're not, you're giving me a bigger number. Well, notice that to the point one is like the fifth root of E. So it's going to be a number smaller than E. Okay, yeah, no, you, you're right. It will be a bigger number. I'm sorry. I don't okay. look at it close uh, enough. Okay. Well, Was I'm, just, it? I, I'm getting a bigger number and I thought it was small. No, you're doing it right. I, I was mistaken. I was thinking it was depreciation. It's not. Okay. What number did you get? Let's just make sure it makes sense. Good. And that makes sense. Because 7% is a pretty good rate. Three years is a reasonable amount of time. You should definitely earn some money on your account. And you're earning about $1,400. So, all right. Let's go forth. Blow this up so I can figure out where you missed. Okay, it looks like you got your logs down pretty good. Do you? You feel comfortable yeah. with uh, these log expressions? Okay. Yeah, it's been a while because I was on mm -hmm. Okay, we don't miss anything until number 11, right? These are also pretty easy. So all you have to do is know your three rules of logs, which are very similar to the, the rules of exponents. Why? Because logs are exponents. Okay. So let's just review the three rules. The log of A times B is the log of A plus the log of B. We don't have any subtraction or division going on, so I won't even write that one. The other key rule is the log of A to the B power. What's that equal to? Um, the log times the log? It's B times the log, yes. 
In other words, the rules of logs allow you to take any exponent of the argument and bring it down there. Okay, so let's apply that rule first to both of these exponents. Well, no, excuse me. One thing we have to do first is apply rule number one. So if I apply rule number one, what does that turn into? Well, give me exactly. Hold on, hold on. Let's talk about terminology for a moment. Uh, one second. <laughs> one second, I had to sneeze. <laughs> All right, the way I say this, I may be different for your teacher, but I say log base 5 of x to the one-third power. Yeah, I remember that. It's just been like a month. Okay. So this is what? Log base 5 of x to the one-third. What's the rest of it? Um, and then like 6 log. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't forget that. Oh yeah, plus 6 log. Five to the Let's y. do it one step at a time, just for this problem right. only. Then you're welcome to combine steps. That's the first step, based on this rule right here. Yeah. Second step is going to be based on this rule down here. So what happens when I fully expand it? When they say expand it, they want you to move that exponent down in front. Yes. So what is it? Uh, the, um, it would be one third to the first log, and then uh, six to the second log. Okay, one third log base five of x plus six log base five of y. There's your fully expanded thing. And they want you to be able to go both ways on these. I guarantee you there's a problem coming up where they're going to give you something in expanded form and they want you to compress it. And as all you do to compress it is you just go the exact reverse order. First you take the leading coefficients, you make them exponents, then you combine two log expressions into one by either multiplying or dividing, depending on whether they're being added or subtracted. Yeah. All right. That was 11. Okay, here we go. These are really pieces of cake. These are not hard problems. You just have got to know your rules for logs. No way around. All right, let's condense this one. What's the first step? Uh, we put the log into, you put the thing in front into like the exponent. The leading coefficient. So I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to put that there. Okay? Now, yeah. now we have three log expressions. None of them have a leading coefficient. So the only thing to do is to handle the fact that these two logs are being added and these this log is being subtracted. So what is my single log expression? Um, with the, um... Remember, you're going to multiply this times that because they're being added. So you multiply it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was that first rule that I put up there. Hold on. Let's back up. Excuse me. Got to remember how to back up properly. Um, no, I erased it. Sorry. No, it's fine. I just haven't like, done this for a while, so I sort of forget. Okay. 
Now, hold on. So, here's what I had. Log base 3 of 15 cubed plus log base 3 of x squared. And incidentally, you can't apply any of these rules unless the base is the same for everything. You know what I mean? In other words, yeah. if one of these was log base 4, I can't do anything with it. It's only if they're the same base that I can compress these into a single log expression. What is multiply? Um, the base, uh, not oh. base, the base. I'm going to multiply that times that. That's called the argument. Okay. So it's 15 times x squared, excuse me, 15 cubed times x squared. And then this just goes in the denominator because it's being subtracted. So its argument, which is 25, goes right there. So that's all you do when you compress and expand. It's these three rules. Let's just review them again. The log of any number, and it doesn't have to be A, B, it could be A, B, C. If it was A, B, C, then it'd be the log of A plus the log of B plus the log of C. So anytime you're multiplying within the argument, you're adding separate logs. Now, if I divide that by a C, then I'm going to subtract the log of C. If I put an exponent there, then I'm going to start putting it there, but then I'm going to move it there. Okay. Okay? All right. Let's go on. Um, I think the next one is 16. Okay, notice you did uh, 11. It looks like perfect, except for one thing. The base. Yeah, that's the only reason you lost points on 11. Um, this one, yeah, you were way off, nowhere close. Um, Uh, did we do 13? I don't think so. No, we didn't. I was just thinking about the others first. 13 is also very easy. you got to apply the change of base formula. In other words, you got a TI-84, right? Yeah, I, I think I must, I don't know, what, I must have just had bad insurance or something. Well, what is this equal to, first of all? You got to, in other words, your TI-84 will not give you this answer. It does not have a log base 5 on it. I think it does. No, uh, if it's an 84, it's got two keys. It's got common log and it's got natural log. That's it. Wait, I just sort of, let me find where it is. Hold on. I, the change of base formula is really easy. It's the log of the higher, the bigger, not the bigger or higher number, the, the number that's higher up, divided by the log of the base. It's that simple. Oh, I, I do have the capability to do this. What's that? I do have the capability to do it on the calculator. You sure you have a TI-84? Yeah, I have the TI-84 plus. Because the TI, oh, maybe the plus gives it. But the Inspire for sure gets it. But that's okay. You want to know your change of base formula. You don't really need any other log base keys. You don't. If I'm doing this problem, even if I have a calculator that allows me to input, I'm not doing it that way. The fastest way is take the log of 23 divided by the log of 5. And it doesn't matter which log you use. That is the same ratio as this, which is the same ratio as log base 17 of 23 divided by log base 17 of 5. In other words, when you use the change of base formula, 
you can use any log you want. These are the two that people use because, like I said, a lot of the calculators only have a natural log or a common log key. Okay. Alright. She only took off one point for that. I'm not sure why. I can't read what your numbers were before she covered them up. Uh, they must have been pretty close because she didn't take off two points. Solve the equation. Okay. Let's go look at 16. Well, you just made a math error here. In other words, when you got the log of A equals the log of B, then you can say A equals B, which is what you did. And let's look at something here. I, I, I notice you did something here that I'm not terrifically fond of, and it's what produced the mistake. You moved the X's to the right side. Wouldn't it make more sense to move the X's to the left side because that always leaves a positive coefficient? In other yeah. words, if I move the X's to the left side, it leaves me X. If I move the one to the right side, it leaves me that. Now the question is, why did she take off a point? I don't know. Is it because it looks a little like a 4? It, it, it certainly looks like a 4 in this step here. And it yeah, looks more like a 4 in that step. Now it looks like a 9 and she still took points off. Ah, ah, there's a reason why that's not correct. Let's talk about it. Uh, did I? No. No, there's a real good reason. It's a 9. She read it as a 9. Here's the problem. If I go back to the original problem and I put in negative 9, then I've got negative 26 there equals the natural log of, Let's see, that's negative 18 minus 8 minus 26 there. Everything looks copacetic, right? Yeah. Except you cannot take the log of a negative number. It's like taking the square root of a negative number. So, uh, it's like extraneous? It's no solution. There is no solution to this problem. Because the only solution you came up with violates, and you only have to violate one domain. If you violated strictly this domain on the left, no solution. Turns out you violated both of them. But that's why this problem is in here. It's not because it's difficult. It's really easy the way you did it. But you didn't check your domain. With log equations, always remember, there are so many extraneous solutions with log equations that you're almost always violating a domain, okay? That's just the nature of log equations, uh, unlike most anything else. Uh, and let's do the next one because that clearly is going to happen on the next one too. So that would be no solution, not extraneous. Well, hold on. This one might have one legitimate solution, but not two. What's the first step in solving that? Cancel the ones? No. You cannot divide both sides by LOG. That's not what log is. Log is not a multiplier. This does not mean log times x plus 2. Okay? So over in 16, it looks like you were doing that, dividing by natural log, but that's not really what you're doing. 
when you have the natural log of one expression equals the natural log of another expression, it is proper to equate those arguments. But you're not dividing by ln. Don't kid yourself into thinking you are, otherwise you'll miss this problem. In other words, I cannot divide both sides by ln. What I can do is add the, L, the log on the right side to the one on the left side. All right. And now, hold it, this is x plus 2. That's all equal to 1. Now, use your rules for condensing and make the left side a single log expression. What is it? Uh, wouldn't it be, uh, wait, that's a two, okay, uh, it would be two x. No, I'm multiplying the uh, arguments. Multiplying. In other words, the inside is this, x plus two times x minus one. Remember that when you're adding separate log expressions and you put them into a single one, you multiply the arguments. Okay, now that becomes x squared plus x minus 2, so I'm taking the log of that, and that's equal to 1. Now how do I solve the rest of it? How do you solve a log equation when you get it down to this point? Can you solve it as a quadratic? First of all, you've got to put it into exponential format. It's in log format right now. Remember, when you have exponential format, you solve it by taking the logs. When you have log format, you solve it by putting it into exponentials. So it's this base to this ex excuse me, it's this base to this exponent equals what's in the middle. So what expression can I write? Um, What's the base on the log? One. It's ten. It's common log. If there's no base written, it's ten. Right. To the one power, in other words, to that number, equals what's in the middle? Um, x squared plus x minus two. Okay. Now, we have a quadratic we have to solve. What's the first step for solving this? Okay, so I got this. Now factor that. makes your solutions x equal minus 4 and x equal 3. Now, like I said, when you are solving a quadratic to get your solutions, I've never seen a case where one of these was not an extraneous solution. Which one is no good? Um, let's see. Uh, 16 plus We're on 17. Uh, can I plug it into the quadratic? No. Nope. Always go back to the original equation. That's a ironclad rule. If you don't go back to this equation, you will not determine whether you're violating the domain or not. You cannot even go to the second equation. I, on mine, I cannot test my domain in this equation. See where I put the check mark? Yes. I got to go back to the original one. Now, my solutions were x equal minus 4 and x equal 3. Which of those solutions does not work? Um, 
In other words, which one which one violates the domain of either log expression? Doesn't have to be both of them. Just if one of them is violated, then we can't use that x value. You violate it, you can't be negative, right? Exactly. So I think it, it's four because minus I four. Be minus four is the bad one because yeah. if I plug it in, I would be taking the log of minus two. You cannot. You can't even take the logs of zero. Log is more restrictive than square root. I can take the square root of zero. I can't take the square root of negative numbers, but I can take the square root of zero. Well, I can't even take the log of zero. And I certainly can't take the log of negative numbers. So since quadratics always produce a positive and a negative solution, almost always, then one of our answers is going to be negative and almost certainly we're going to violate one of these domains. And that's all you have to do is violate one of them and that answer gets thrown out. Okay? Alright, let's look at 18. see what you did first. A e to the RT, that's good. A thousand times 1.05. Okay, notice what you did between this expression and this expression. You wrote A e to the RT, both the R and the T are in the exponent. And you wrote that as 1,000 E No, you did it right. Oh, 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 I see what you did. I see what you did. Well, first of all, I don't know where you came up with this 1,000 times 1 1.05 to the T. That makes it look like you were doing E times R to the T or actually e times 1 plus r to the t. Well, that's not what it is. Um, you made the same mistake on a previous problem. The It's r only. It's not 1 plus r. So what goes in that exponent is 0 0.05, the interest rate, times t. Well, they didn't give us a t. Okay? They want to know when this will double. So if all of that's equal to that, there's our specific formula for this account. What do I need to make A if I want to figure out T? In other words, it's saying solve for T. How long will it take your money to double? Well, what would you start with? Uh, well, I had the wrong number to start with. So it's no, look at my screen, not not over here. here. Um, aren't, I aren't I starting with that? Isn't that always my starting amount? Yes. Okay, so if I'm going to double it, what's my ending amount? What does this have to go to if I'm trying to double my money? Um, 2,000. Okay. So that's all you do. It's 2,000 equals 1,000 times E to the 0.05T. Now, this is an exponential equation. It is not an algebraic one. Yeah. The only way to solve exponential equations when your variable is in the exponent is to bring logs into the problem. And I don't want to take logs of both sides until I get that isolated all by itself. So what's the first step here? Oh, got to Listen to what I said. I don't want to put it in log forms until I get that isolated all by itself. Then you have to... Got to get rid of that thousand. How do I get rid of that thousand? That thousand is not being acted on by that exponent. Um, then you just subtract it. 
Not subtract. What's the thousand doing right now? It's a multiplier. Okay. So when I divide both sides by a thousand, I get that. Two. Now, I got this thing completely isolated. I can take the natural log of both sides. And that's all you're doing. It, it's very important to think of this as an equation where you're doing the same thing to the left side as you are the right. That's what you're doing when you take when you're allowed to take the log of both sides of an equation. Just doing it's like adding 10 to both sides. Okay? Now that I got it in log form, how can I write that? Um, x in my log in exponential form. Tell me what, not yet, tell me what this becomes using the rules of logs. What can I do with that exponent? You can bring it to the top. Okay. So it becomes 0.05t times a natural log of E equals natural log of Q. Well, what's the natural log of E equal to? Oh, that's equal to 1. Correct. So I can basically erase it. Now solve for T. What's T equal to? Um, T is equal to negative. No, give me the expression. Give me the exact answer. Natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.05, right? In other words, now it's an algebraic expression. Even though there's a natural log in there, that's a number. That's all that is, is a number. So yeah. this becomes an algebraic expression because we don't have any variables in the exponents anymore. By converting it to a log equation, we were able to take this variable and move it down on the algebra line. Now, the rest of it, you just solve like you would a algebra problem. 0.05 is a multiplier, so I'm going to divide both sides by 0.05. And now you get this number out of your calculator. Yeah. What'd you get? I got 13.86 equals T. Okay. Let's see if that makes sense. We're trying to double our money at a relatively low interest rate of 5%. 13 years makes about sense. Notice how I can tell. If I multiply 13 times 5, that's 65%. Well, when you're compounding money, it's always more than that. And in fact, this is a perfect case. By virtue of compounding, instead of over 13 years just getting 65% interest, I actually double my money. I end up getting 100% interest. And it's because of the compounding. And the continuous compounding is the best of all. And so knowing that 5% interest rate takes 13 years to double your money, that's, that's definitely ballpark. So I know I got it right. And you always want a ballpark check on these because you notice you're always getting these answers out of a calculator. And so it's really easy to screw up and make a mistake. And in other words, some people might do this. They might do the natural log of 2 divided by 0.05, which is incorrect. That's not the same as what we have. We have the natural log of 2 Whatever that number is, divide it by 0.05. All right, let's go on. So number four. Let's talk about number four. Our function is y equal log base 2 of x plus 1. Well, 
let's draw this function first. That's the parent function. This one is? Looks like all log functions, just like that. Goes through this point, 1 comma 0. Does it have a vertical asymptote? Uh, yeah. Right through the y-axis. Um, We're getting to that. Hold on. We're getting to that. Um, now let's look at our function. What's the difference between the parent function and our function? The only difference is that plus one. What are the consequences of that plus one? That you have a vertical asymptote negative one. Well, it's a horizontal shift to the left is what it is. Since we're doing a horizontal shift to the left, yeah, we've got to change that vertical asymptote also. It's got to go to minus one. So my new vertical asymptote is x equal minus one. And now my curve looks like this. Now let's talk about domain and range. Looking at the red line only. What's the domain? Make sure you look horizontally, not vertically. There's the y-axis, there's the x-axis. I'm erasing everything else because I want you to read the domain and range from the graph. Not from negative, uh, it would be negative infinity to infinity. Hold on, hold on. Look horizontally. Domain is always the x allowable values. Do you see any x values at minus 4? Uh, they must be negative 1. Ah, there you go. Negative 1 to what? Infinity. You got it. Now, let's look at range from the graph. It could be like any number. Okay, negative infinity to positive infinity. That's the range. Now, this is a little tricky because it's not obvious that that eventually goes to positive infinity on the y-axis. From the appearance of the graph, it almost appears like there's a horizontal asymptote that it's approaching, but it does not. And that, actually, you can figure out by looking at the function instead of the graph. In other words, the function is y equal, let's just look at this function here, log base 2 of x. Because it, it looks a lot like the red, okay? But notice that x, I can go to all the way to infinity on x. Well, when I go to infinity on x, y eventually gets to infinity also. y continues to go in this direction forever. It does not flatten out and approach a horizontal asymptote. Remember that, because whenever you see a graph of a log function, it's going to look like it's approaching a horizontal asymptote, but it doesn't. It's just a very, very slow-growing function, but it always grows. Okay, let's look at number five. Hold on. So how much money must be deposited now? Notice that every one of these questions has a different variable that you have to solve for. Sometimes you're solving for A, big A. Okay, this is compounding quarterly. Give me the general equation. 
That's your first uh, step. Uh, the, uh, like what is it? Not what it's like. Tell me what it is. There is the one plus the whatever would that be called out. R. Right. Oh, yeah. RT. No, it's divided by N. Divided by like the time. Like, no, like, it's not divided like, by time. It's divided by N. And what N is, is the number of times per year that it's compounded. And then N is also in that exponent multiplying the T. So memorize that. You need this, you need this standard general formula. You can't really do much of anything without always starting here. Okay. Now, let's fill in everything they've given us and see if we can get it down to one variable. They say how much money must be deposited, so they're really asking for that, which means they must give us everything else. Well, what's big A on the left side of the equation? One thousand. Equals A sub zero times one plus R is what? Ten. No, point eight. Point, point, point zero eight. Point zero eight. What is N? It's compounded quarterly. Or and ten years. So they gave us everything. Now it's really easy to solve, right? In other words, now we have one, now it's simple algebra. Oh, well, I'm not sure how simple it is, but it's algebra. That becomes one, here, let's combine those numbers. That is 0 0.0032. So it's 0 0.00, no, excuse me, 0 0.002. Four goes into eight twice. Okay, uh, in fact, excuse me, I should be using a calculator since I keep making mistakes. 0 0.08 divided by 4 is 0 0.02. Okay, and now I'm taking it to the 40th power. Whenever you have these compounding where you're using this general formula, you always have an exponent that's gigantic. Imagine if we were compounding it daily. Then our exponent would be 365 times 10. So don't be scared off by these huge giant exponents. Yeah. So, because you always get them. So here's our answer. 1,000 divided by 1.02 to the 40th power. What do you get? Now this could be a little tricky. You want to make sure you do a thousand divided by that in parentheses. 1.02 raised to the 40th power. Okay. See, 1.02, go ahead. 452.89. Takes that long, that many years. Or, yeah. no, excuse me. No, you were right. Sorry, I was wrong. $452.89. In other words, that's the amount we have to deposit. If you deposit $452 and if you get an interest rate of 0.08% compounded quarterly and you leave it in there for 10 years, it will turn into 1000 All right, let's see, six you got right, seven you got right, eight you got right, nine you got right, everything else right on this page it looks like. Okay, let's go down and look at 11. Find the inverse. Okay, these are good problems, these are a little tricky.
that's an x. What's the first step in finding the inverse? Yeah, it's just a two-step process. That's the first step. Now, how do we solve for y? Um, Turn it into exponential expression. What's the exponential expression here? Um, would it be um, exponential? You want to be able to instantly go between log and exponential. And I mean instantly. If it's taking you two minutes to figure out how to do it, you need to review it. Because you have to do this all the time when you're dealing with logs, is to go back and forth between exponential expression and log expression. If I told you the log base 10 of 2 equals 100, excuse me, there's the 2, let me do it this way, the log of 100 base 10 equals 2, put that into an exponential expression. Well, figure it out. If, a long time. Well, figure it out. Is there any combination of numbers here? In other words, is 10 to the 2 power equal 100? Yeah. Okay then what you do to convert logarithming to exponential is you take the base, you raise it to the exponent, remember logs are exponents, and it's equal to the argument. It's really simple. It's to, in my way of thinking, it's the number on the far left raised to the power on the far right equals the middle. Problem is, is that the log is not always on the left side of the equation, which is our case here. In other words, there is no number on the far left raised to the number on the far right. So I got to take the base, that's one fifth, raise it to the exponent, which is x, that's equal to the argument. And now, we've got our inverse. Remember that our only goal was switch the variables and solve for y. And we've done it. Okay? That's all you ever have to do is switch the variables and solve for y. Alright, let's look at number 12. Log, and here we're just evaluating Oh, you got that right. I was going to say, you got all these right. How'd you miss 12? You didn't miss it. 13, you got okay. You expanded. 14, good. Yeah, it's just 15 that I didn't get. Okay, well, let's look at 15. Now we're condensing. Hold on, let me move this a little bit left, so I have enough room. Okay, so here is our expression. And remember, we're going to condense exactly the same way we expanded. We're just going to go in the opposite order. So what's the first step? Um, put it like in the denominator, like Always deal with these leading coefficients first. What happens to that one half? Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is this. And get rid of it as a thing, okay? Now, before we subtract, let's simplify. What's 16 to the 1 half? It's the square root of 16. That's what 1 half means. The square root of 16 is 4. Okay. So what we're really looking at is the log base 5 of 4 minus the log base 5 of x cubed 
plus the log base 5 of y. And we want to condense. Condense means turn it into a single log expression, base 5. What goes in the argument? Can you do the last one was log base 5, y to the 4? Excuse me, you're right. Absolutely. Thank you. So now what goes in the argument? Everything that's being added goes in the numerator as multipliers. Everything that's being subtracted goes in the denominator. So the denominator would be the log by... No, just the arguments. It's, remember, we've condensed it to a single log expression. So let's talk about just what goes in the argument. What's being added? That's being added to that. Let's do the numerator. What's that yeah. give us in the numerator? That would be log base 5. You got it. And now, that's being subtracted, meaning it goes in the denominator. Yeah. There's your answer. Yeah. <coughs> 16, looks like you got. Got everything else? All the way down to 20. Let's figure out the extraneous solution. And 20. Well, yeah, we got time to do 20. No, I don't know if you have time. You, are you off to school? Uh, I have to be at school in like nine years, but it's fine because like let's I do this. To... Let's do this last problem. Okay. Then we'll go. For solving log equations, it's always the same process. You condense it, then you turn it into an exponential, and then you solve it, and then you test your answers to see if they violate the domains. So that's always the process for solving log equations. So condense it first. goes in the argument? Um, would it be multiplied to be x squared minus 6x? Now turn it into an exponential expression. Um, in other words, I don't have anywhere to go from here. I can't do much with this. But if I can get it into an exponential expression, you'll see magical things happen. What's the exponential expression? Number on the far left raised to the number on the far right equals the number in the middle. Okay, so it would be uh, 4 squared. Hold on. Number on the far left raised to the number on the far right. It would be 2 to the 4. Equals that. Now, 2 to the 4th is 16. So now we turn it into a quadratic. Solve it just like you would solve any quadratic. Hold on. Factor that. X minus 8 times X plus 2. My solutions are X equal 8 and X equal minus 2. Does either of those solutions violate the domain? Uh Think so. Probably one of Which one? Negative two. Okay. Because if you go back, and you always have to go back to that, do not make the mistake of going to your second line. Because notice something. Negative two may not violate this. And in fact, it doesn't. Negative two gives you four plus 12, 16. Gives you a positive argument. Yes, there is not. 
And that might seem a little strange to you, that these two are not equivalent. Line one and line two is not equivalent. It's the way to solve log equations, but it's not an equivalency. In other words, this is not exactly the same as that. We notice that the minus two violates the domain in the first one. It does not violate the domain in the second one. So you always need to go back to the first one. You will not find your domain violations in this line here. So what we do is cross off the minus two, check the other one, eight's positive, eight minus six is positive, it's perfectly fine as a solution. All right, Sam, I'll let you get off to school, and we know we left at 20. How many more are on this thing? Probably not that many, huh? Yeah. That's it. There's only one that we didn't uh, do. That was 23. Oh, no, there's all kinds of There's more stuff to go. Okay. Well, we know which one we got through. Yeah, sounds good. All right, Sam. Have a good one. Thank you, Jim. Bye-bye. Well, just take it.